Hello, in this video, I'll go through the loan and investment template. Now on the screen, I've opened up the template and it's powered with Microsoft Excel. So you need to have Excel, a version from 2010, installed on your computer. Now once you open up the document, you arrive at the dashboard, and this holds three thumbnails to navigate to the three major sections of the template. We have the customer section where you add your customers, both loan and investment customers, the transaction section where you enter loan and investment transactions, and the report section, which enables you to view multiple automatically generated reports. Now in this video, I'm going to go through all the sections, starting with the first, which is the customer section. Now to open any particular section, you simply click. So notice as I click on the button customer, it takes us to that section of the template. So now you notice that we're in the loan customer information section. Now all sections in this template have an identical formatting. In the upper left hand corner, we have the section title, and this tells the user at any point in time the section you're on. So notice it says loan customer information. So you know this is where you document all of your loan customers. Now as requested, the customer section has been split into two parts. The first part, which is currently opened up on the screen where you enter your loan customers, and the second part, which I'm going to cover shortly, where you enter your investment customers. Now to the right of the label here, we have three buttons to add a new customer, to delete an existing customer, and to navigate to the investment customer section. Above the three buttons, we have our navigation pane, and this has several labels to navigate to a particular section of the template. So each label is a button. So for instance, if I click on dashboard, you notice it takes us back to the dashboard where we initially started. Recall, I then clicked on customer. So each label represents a button to navigate to a particular section of the template. Below the three buttons here, we have our data table, and this is where all loan customers will be listed. At the top, you notice we have column headers. These are the attributes you're expected to supply per customer. Now to add a new customer, you simply click on the Add Customer button at the top, and this pops up the Excel form. Now Excel forms simply provide a simple way to store data to this table here. So you notice that the column headers that I referenced earlier on are equally listed on the form as labels. The user simply has to supply values to the white portion of the form. So first, you indicate the customer's first name. Now to move to the next field, which is the last name field, you can either click with your mouse or you can conveniently make use of the tab key. So the tab key provides a faster way to navigate from your current field to the next field for data entry. Next, you enter the birth date. Now, by default, Excel is going to enter today's date just to show you the format. You can now even modify the day, the month, and the year. Next, you enter the phone number, the email address, the physical address, the organization, referral, the bank and the account number, the gender, the marital status, the account officer, the means of identification, the employment status, the job title, the employer, the business address, and lastly, the next of king. Now, once you're done to applying all the values, before you click the enter button, simply go through to be sure you didn't make any mistake. So here I notice I spelled random wrong, so I can correct that before I store the customer. So simply go through all the values. Now once you verify that every attribute is correct, you then go ahead and click enter to store this customer. And once I click enter, it tells me customer has been added. Once I click OK, it's going to list the customer on the first row. So the full name is made up of the first and the last name you supply. The customer ID is made up of the first three characters of the first and last name, and then the year of birth. And you notice the other fields that I supplied as I scroll to the right. So that's how you add customers to the loan customer section. To add a new customer, you simply repeat the process. You click add new, it pops up the form, and then you supply all the values. Now, not all the fields are mandatory. Okay, so it's possible that as that's when you're entering the customer, you might not know their email address or their employment status. So you can leave those fields blank. The only mandatory fields are the first four fields, which is the first name, the last name, the birth date, and the phone number. Now, if I don't enter anything and I click enter, you notice that Excel is going to highlight those rows or those fields in red, telling me that I must apply the first and last name, the birth date, and the phone number. 
Now, the last thing I'm going to point out is the birth date. Now, the birth date, first, you can enter a future date as you can't, you know, you can't enter, for instance, 2019. It's going to tell you invalid date. So you have to enter either a past date or today's date. So you notice if I change that, it accepts it. Secondly, the format of the date depends on the settings on your computer. So mine is day, month, year. So I enter the two digits of the day, two digits of the month, and then the four digits of the year. If you enter this format and it doesn't work, simply flip it around and then enter the month, day, year. So it's either of the two. Okay, so that depends on the format on your computer. And so I'm just going to enter a second customer. It's going to be John. This is going to be Williams. You notice as I'm supplying the values, the red alert disappears there. And I'm just going to enter the birth date. Let's assume this person was born on the 1st of February, 1983. And lastly, I enter the phone number. So once I'm done entering the four mandatory fields, I can click enter and it's going to accept it. So those are the only four fields you need to enter as at today. In the future, you can always double click on the field and supply the values once you have it. So now we've added two customers. Now to delete a particular customer, it's very easy. All you need to do is to click on the customer's name. Now any cell you click on is going to have a border around it. So you notice I clicked on the phone number, it has a border. The email, it has a border. So to delete any customer, you simply need to click on that customer's full name, so John Williams. Once you do, you click on delete. You're going to get a confirmation message asking if you want to delete this customer. It's equally going to tell you the name, which is John Williams. So if you do, you click yes. If you don't, you click no. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes, and you notice that that row is going to be deleted. So that's how you add new customers and you delete existing customers. Next, we move to the investment customer section just to demonstrate how to add that by clicking on it. Now, this section works exactly the same as the loan section. At the, type, at the top, excuse me, we have the title, which tells you this is where you document investment customers. We have our three buttons here and our data table. To add a new customer, you click New Customer and you supply all the values. It works the same way, so I'm just going to head and add only one customer. And I'm going to add only the mandatory field so I don't waste so much time. And the phone number. But you can go ahead and supply other values too. Once you click enter, it's going to store that investment customer. So it works exactly the same as the loan customer section. The first row is populated with what we supplied. Now the investor ID is a 10 digit unique number. And this will be automatically generated by Excel based on the row number. So this is on row number five. So this is going to be five. Next is going to be six, seven, up until infinity. But it's going to keep increasing by one. Um, well, not up until infinity, excuse me, up until I think 1 million. The template can, I think, support up to, um, I think, a bit over, I think, 1 million rows. I don't know the exact number, but that should be sufficient. Um, next, to go back to the customer section, you simply click on the loan customer, and it takes us back to that section. So next, we move to the expense section of the template. To open it up, you simply click on the label expense, and that takes us to the expense section of the template. Now, the expense section supports tracking all of your business expenses. You notice it has the same formatting. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the title. It tells you this is where you document all business expenses. To the right, we have two buttons to add a new business expense and to delete an existing expense. Above this, we have our navigation pane. And below the two buttons, we have our data table where all expenses will be listed. Now, to add a new expense, you simply click on the Add Expense button at the top, and this pops up an Excel form. First, you indicate the expense date. I'm going to backdate to January. Next, you select the expense category. Now, this holds a drop-down list with several options. And later on in the video, I'm going to show you how you can update these values to better suit your business. I'm going to select the first. And under expense detail, you're going to supply additional details pertaining to this expense transaction. I'm going to enter something very random. Um, let's assume we spent 10,000 on the adverts. The template calculates the total and I go ahead and click enter. So now I've supplied my first business expense. So you notice the first row is populated the values that I supplied. To add another expense, you repeat, add expense, enter the expense dates. I'm just gonna enter random dates, ignore the validity of the data. This is more for demonstration purposes, just to show you the functionality. I'm going to make this my rents. So let's assume my February you know, office space, and this is you might pay, I don't know, 300,000. Once I'm done, I click enter, and it's going to store that transaction to my table. So notice now we have two expenses. Now to delete any expense, very simple, you simply click on the expense date, click on delete, 
and the template is going to ask if you want to delete this rent. If you do, you click yes. If you don't, you click no. So that's how you add business expenses to the expense section. So next we move to the loan section of the template. Now to open that up, you simply click on loans and it takes us to that section of the template. So this is where you enter all loan transactions. So you notice the label at the top says loan information. Now to the right of this, we have four buttons to add a new loan, to add payment when received from customer, to add a default fee and to delete an existing loan. At the top, we have the navigation pane and below the buttons, we have our data table where all loan transactions will be listed. Now to add a new loan, you simply click on the add loan button and it pops up a form. First, you enter the loan date. Now this is important. This is the start date because the template is going to start counting from this date. So I'm going to backdate to May. I'm going to enter the customer's name. Now this is going to list all customers in our loan customer section. So you can either click or start typing and the template will auto fill. So let's assume that Rose Random borrows 100,000 for a period of three months with a 10% monthly interest. And once you enter the interest amount and you tab away, the template will automatically calculate the interest amount for the entire three months and the monthly payment expected. Now let's do the math. The principal is 100,000. There's a 10% interest, meaning that every month the customer is supposed to pay an additional 10%, 10,000 as interest. For a period of three year, three months, that's 10 times three, which gives us 30,000. And the monthly payment is obtained by adding the principal plus the interest, which is 130,000, divided by the duration, which gives us a bit over 43,000. This would enter a generic referral and a generic account. Now for all demonstrations in the video, please kindly ignore the validity of the data. The data might not make practical sense. I'm just entering values to demonstrate the functionality of the template. So once you're done, you simply click on enter and it's going to store this loan to our database. So you notice the first row is populated with the values that I supplied. We have the loan date. The loan ID is automatically generated. It's made up of the month, the year, and three unique digits. The month is five, which is for May. The year is 2018 and the digits we have 005, which is unique. The next loan ID is going to be the month, the year, and 006 and so on. Next tells us the transaction type. So this can take three types. We have loans, we have payments, and we have default fees. And then we have all the other attributes that I supplied. And the next formula generated field is the status column. Now, as explained in the template plan, the status column supports four options. We have active. Active simply means that the loan period is not over. We have closed, which means that the customer clears the loan, 130000 on or before the end date plus four days grace. We have closed late, that's if the customer clears this amount after the close dates. And then lastly, we have default, which means that the loan hasn't been cleared, but the end date is over. And um, kindly refer to the template plan for additional details. Now we have the payments column. This is where all payments will be listed. And if I scroll to the right, the end date is also automatically calculated. Recall the loan starts on the 13th of May. We specified it's a three month period. So we have the May, the next starts from June, July and it ends on the 17th of August 2018. So the four days grace period has been automatically added. Now if the customer doesn't clear this loan as at this date, the status will change to either default or closed late. Then we have other columns to the right. So that's pretty much how you add loan transactions. Now let's assume that this customer makes part payments. So you make use of the payments button. You simply click on add payments. You enter the dates you received the amount. So let's say that's the 20th of May. Next, you select the loan ID. Now, once you do, the template will automatically return the customer's name, the balance, which in this case is 130,000, and the expected monthly payments. So here I'm going to enter the amount the customer pays. And before 3,333.34. Now, because of the infinite decimal places here, it's always good to round it up um, so that the template can easily do the math. And then brief details. So this can be May payments. Now, once you're done entering the payment details, you simply click on enter and the template is going to document that transaction. So you notice the second row is populated, the dates, the ID, which is the same. This is a payment as opposed to the first, which was a loan. This is the customer. And if I scroll to the payments column, we should see that this is the amount. So that's how the template works. And now the template, I mean, the status is still active because the customer hasn't paid off the entire 130 and the loan period is not over because it's up until the 17th of August. So if I scroll to the right and I click on add payments, if I reselect that ID, you notice that the balance has reduced from 130,000 to a bit over 86,000. 
So the set template has recognized this payment. Now, just for demonstration purposes, as I said, ignore the validity of this. Let's assume the next day the customer clears the loan. So the customer pays the 86,666.66. And since this is an infinite decimal, I'm going to make that 67 so that it doesn't leave any sense. And I'm going to enter details, so this will just be balance paid. So once I've entered all the values, I simply click on enter. And we have our third row there. If I scroll to the right, you notice that now the status has automatically updated to closed because the template recognized that the payment is equal to or above the principal plus interest. So that's how the status column works. It will automatically update based on information you enter. Now, just to demonstrate how the status column works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the payments we just added by clicking on the dates, clicking on delete, clicking on yes, and I'm going to add a default fee. So let's assume that the customer doesn't pay in the month of June. So I simply click on add default. I enter the date. So this is June. I select the loan ID. And once you do, the template will automatically list the customer's name, the loan amount, your monthly expected payments, the duration, and the balance expected. So here, based on your formulas, you can calculate whatever the charge is based on information here. And let's assume that the charge is, just for demonstration purposes, um, 4000 And the reason, you know, I'll just say default June 2018. Once you click enter, it's going to store that transaction. And there we go. So this is default. So these are the three types we can have. So we can have loan, we can have payment, and we can have default. So this is the amount that a customer is expected to pay, which is 4000 based on the default. Now, the template will automatically increase the customer's balance. So if I go to payments and I select, you notice the balance has increased to 90 from 86. So the template recognizes this additional charge. So the total balance will always update. It will reduce whenever you add a payment. It will increase whenever you add a default. So at any point in time, you know the outstanding that each customer, um, that each loan has. Okay, so that's pretty much a summary of this. So I go to cancel. That's how you add loans. You click on add loan, you supply all the values. This is how you add payments, add defaults, and delete loans. And all the other columns will automatically update by Excel. Now, that pretty much sums up the loan functionality. So your only source of income in the template is loans. So if you go to the report section, and if I generate our profit and loss statements, 